Hi guys and welcome to this video. Today I want to talk about my favorite type of screw connection. Specifically, we will design a small and simple box with a lid secured by screws. You can easily adapt this design to your projects. So without any further ado, my favorite type of screws for 3D printing projects are, maybe surprisingly, wood screws. These are widely available and in my opinion really the easiest to integrate into 3D printed projects. If you are willing to put in a tiny little bit of design work, you will not have to worry about tolerances and you will save yourself any kind of post-processing for assembly. I have chosen this particular screw which is labeled 4 by 17 mm. The first number indicates the outer diameter of the thread, which we can measure like this. The second number is the length of the screw excluding the head. For our design we will need two more numbers we have to measure using our calipers. One downside of using wood screws is that they are not so well standardized, so I recommend checking when changing brands or suppliers. First I want to get the core diameter of the screw, which cannot be measured directly. So I measure some mixed diameter, where one end of the caliper is at the base of the thread, while the other touches the tip of the thread. I read 3.1 mm, so I can calculate the core diameter. I know that the thread profile height is 4 minus 3.1 equals 0.9 mm, so the core diameter is 4 minus 2 times 0.9 equals 2.2 mm. The other value I want to measure is the thread's pitch. To get a precise measurement, I measure over several turns. Here I managed to measure over 5 turns and got 9.4 mm. So the pitch is 9.4 by 5 equals 1.88 mm. I remember these values, but of course we could start off by defining parameters, like I did in my Parametric Connect 4 video, link in the description. By the way, for this video I went through the trouble of redesigning this type of thread in detail, which was quite challenging to me. Actually, I could not do it in Fusion alone and had to resort to a solution that involved some coding. If you are interested or want to suggest a simpler solution, let me know in the comments. Now we are ready to start with our basic box design. I start with a sketch on the top plane and sketch a rectangle starting at the origin. The box will be symmetrical, so we will only sketch a quarter of the actual object. I convert two sides of the rectangle to center lines. This way we can still specify the total dimensions of the final box directly. I want the box to be 100 by 70 mm in size. Then I add circles where the screw holes will be. I want to have a total of 6 screws on this box, so in this quarter of the box there will be 2 circles somehow representing 1.5 sockets for the screws. These circles should be tangential to the rectangle. I decide for a diameter of 12 mm for the sockets, but of course we could come back and make changes later. I use the equal constraint instead of entering the dimension twice before measuring the distances of the screw holes. For that I just try to add dimensions and confirm to create driven dimensions. Now we know that the distances of the screws at the corners will be 88 and 58 mm respectively. Let's finish the sketch. Now let's extrude the base body of the quarter box. I choose extrude and select the relevant profiles before entering a height of 20 mm. Then I shell the body. For that I select all faces to remove, which in this case are the two inner faces at the planes we are going to mirror about and the top face. I choose a wall thickness of 1.6 mm before confirming. Next we want to extrude the sockets. After selecting the profiles I choose join, then extend to object and select the top face of the box. Next let's fillet the inner edges. Here I choose a radius of 3 mm. Except for the screw holes, we are finished with the box part, so let's continue with the lid. For that I create the sketch on the top plane of the box. Here I just add two lines, connecting the top face to the origin, to create a closed profile. Already the sketch is finished. Now we can extrude the lid. I want to have room for a counterbore, so I make the lid a little thicker, I choose 4mm. The lid should not merge with the box, so I choose the new body option. Next I create the sketch on the front plane. Here I will sketch the cross sections needed for the screw hole. I start by protecting the inner, bottom and top faces of the box as reference, before creating an axis. 
We will design the hole at the origin and move it to the appropriate position later. I start with the counter bore for the screw head and the through hole in the lid. Then I sketch the outer contour of the hole. Next I add lines indicating the core of the hole. As outer diameter I choose 4.4 mm, which is slightly greater than the screw's outer diameter. For the core I choose 2.2 mm, which is again 10% greater than the screw's core diameter. I want the chamfers to be 45 degrees and finish off the sketch by specifying the diameter and depth of the counter bore, which will approximately fit the screw head. While we are looking at the sketch, feel free to like and subscribe and join my free community to ask your questions, link in the description. I also enjoy reading feedback or ideas for new videos in the comments. Next I revolve the core profile as new body. If I used just this body to cut the screw holes, I would certainly have a problem during assembly. Trying to get the screws in would require quite some torque, more severely though they would cut deep into the printed walls and possibly split the part. Putting in just a little bit of design work will instead give me a perfect screw connection. Let's just add grooves for the threads so we don't damage our printed part during assembly. I start by creating a coil on the top plane. Its diameter will be 4.4 mm, which is the outer diameter I've just used in the sketch. For now I want to create a new body. The coil should cover the whole screw, so I drag the arrow up. Next I enter the correct pitch value of 1.88 mm, which I've measured in the very beginning. We want an external triangular section, which extends inwards from the given diameter. The section size is not critical, a value similar to the pitch will definitely work. So I enter 1.8 mm and we are done with defining the coil. The coil will only be needed in the outer region of the screw hole sketch. So I revolve this outer profile again as new body. A quick note, I am creating these bodies as new bodies instead of joining or intersecting them when creating, because I found that this is the most robust way. Particularly when making changes later on, unexpected things might happen if you rely on joining with visible bodies at the creation step. Now let's join the bodies appropriately. First I intersect the outer body with the coil. This already looks right, the only thing left to do is to join the remaining coil body with the core body. Now let's have a quick look at our result. We have created space for our screw head, a through hole section in the lid, and a threaded section which will go into the sockets in the box. As mentioned before, we still need to move the whole body to the right position. So I click move copy, select the body, then make sure that move type is point to point, select the top center of the whole body as origin point, and the top center of the socket circle as target point. In this case we can easily multiply the hole from there, so I don't check the create copy option before confirming. Now, and this is important, before removing the whole body from the other bodies, I turn to mirroring. Think about it, any model thread would change its handedness when mirrored, which is most certainly not what we want. We would definitely have a hard time finding a left handed wood screw. So first I mirror both the box and the lid about the left plane. Then I do the exact same thing about the front plane. Now we can finally remove the whole body from the other bodies. I first remove it from the lid with the keep tools option checked. Then I remove it from the box and I don't need to keep a copy anymore. The way I've designed the box I can multiply the hole using a rectangular pattern. I select type features and select both combined features as objects. As axes I select the x and y axes. I want to have three instances along the x axis over an extent of 88 mm. Here I have to add a negative sign. Along the y axis I want two instances at a distance of 58 mm, again with a negative sign. These distance values are the ones I have measured in the first sketch. I have to use compute type optimized to ensure that the features are actually moved instead of being recomputed and ending up in the same location. Now let's add some finishing touches. I add a 1mm chamfer to the edges before creating a 3mm fillet. As always I don't fillet edges which might touch the print bed. In this simple case I could also fillet the top face of the lid, but don't do it for symmetry. 
The bodies are essentially finished and I continue by moving them into separate components and letting Fusion surprise me with its choice of colors. I of course could stop here and print the parts, but for completeness I want to add the screws to the model. I open the data panel, right click on the model of the screw and select insert into current design. First I move the screw somewhere I can see it before confirming the insert. I recognized that I had not grounded the lid, so I quickly did that. As the box and lid were designed together, I don't want to assemble them using joints, but just have them both grounded. The screw however will be positioned using a joint. I select the circle at the bottom of the head as reference at the screw before selecting the circle at the counter bore on the lid. The screw gets placed in the wrong direction, but we can quickly fix that using the flip button. Now this looks almost right, but if we are into the details, we can see that the screw does not fit the thread yet. There is a handle for rotation though, and we can just drag it to rotate the screw until it fits nicely. Now we can use duplicate with joints to copy the screw to the other holes. After selecting the screw, I just have to click the plus button and select the new reference to place another screw. Finally, I want to do a section analysis to check my model and enjoy my detailed model of the screw connection. I like this type of connection for its simplicity and robustness. These threads are really hard to damage and can be assembled multiple times without any issues. I will let you know about testing results in another video. In the end, I decided to add an interior chamfer. I hope you've enjoyed this video and have learned something interesting or helpful. Again, feel free to like, subscribe and join. Link in the description. I also love hearing from you in the comments. Have a great time designing and prototyping.